Let's do this, some bitch. And a three, and a two, and a. It's May 19th, 2019. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. Welcome to Cubs Out Live, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 509. And sleep masks are my friend right now. Plan on using that maybe an hour or so here, uh, <laughs> because you know when you work overnight, it's much easier to sleep when you don't have any light. Anyways, that's, that's just me. Anyways, Gary, what, what the hell are we talking about today? I'm looking confused. Okay. So I was watching something on. YouTube. Mm-hmm. Shocker. Seriously. Hey. Normally you save the shade for COLTR, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they were promoting the Absolute Vodka Pride bottle. How Absolute mm-hmm. Vodka is giving away like a free round trip ticket to World Pride in New York City in June and like blah, 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 blah. And they also mentioned that the Pride bottle will now be available year round. As opposed to like specialty during Pride season, so you will always be able to buy your Absolute with Pride year round at your local like you know retailers. Blah blah blah. Mm. So it kind of bothered me a little bit because I was like, anytime we get to this time of year, it's May. We're moving into June. We're moving into quote unquote Pride season, mm-hmm. and this year is especially important because it's the 50th anniversary Stonewall. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's 69 to 2019. It's been 50 years. And I expect this year more than ever to obnoxiously be promoted anything that has a rainbow on it. Like, Facebook has already been, like, throwing up ads about, you know, like, look at all these cute rainbow speakers because that's <laughs> something I need. So it really got me thinking about, like, how we're going to have this visual battle going on around us about like rainbow everywhere and like how we you know need to be proud and out Mm -hmm. and that really made me start to question and and i know this might seem a little odd to say but like are we selling out as Mm -hmm. in like are we one like being sold to purely because we're gay like that businesses are like oh i'm just gonna throw a a rainbow on it and like look at all the money that the gays will give me like Mm -hmm. starbucks just recently released their iced tumbler that is rainbow themed and says love or something on it and like some of these businesses have been doing this stuff for quite a while so i'm not like criticizing like these corporations, especially when they donate to pride events and makes the pride event possible because of their sponsorships and that kind of stuff. Like that's, it's just the way it works. I understand that, but there's a point where I'm kind of like, how much rainbow shit do we need? And more importantly, like, do we, did how many people really understand what the rainbow stood for originally And how far have we moved away from that? Because there's been a big concern, I think, that once marriage equality was achieved, that we would, like, kind of sit back and be like, oh, girl, like, it's all good now. Like, you know, like, (laughs) we all could get married, like, and we can adopt. And But that's not really what we're facing today. So are you are you trying to say more of. Because I think part of this is is because. Uh, acceptance and possibly even understanding has been uh, is more prominent these days mm-hmm. um i mean it's still not perfect but you know yeah um by that the marketing 
because you know at least in america we're a capitalist society right we're about making money Money makes the vet go on, the vet go on, the vet go on, <laughs> money makes the vet go on, the clinking, clinking sound that makes right. the vet go on. Got it. Gonna... So, um, it could just be that they're marketing harder. Like, this is something that they're now, it's like, because everything's getting more acceptance, it feels better, that companies feel more comfortable selling the products uh, and everything for that. But it could well, also be that another thing that you're looking at is because of all this acceptance and that products and everything, that we may be becoming more complacent. Right. Because like, so as I was saying in the doc, like in light of the political climate that we have in the U.S. right now, mm-hmm. are we selling out as in like we're resting on our laurels as in we're taking us like not taking a step back, but we're just like kind of chilling out. Because the things that have been happening in terms of like women's reproductive rights in the past oh my God. months, like, <laughs> are really taking all the headlines right now. And even though it's 2019, there's a lot of like political like focus towards the 2020 election that's going to mm-hmm. be coming up. And importantly, I think that like like I everything's interconnected, at least in terms of my viewpoint. Like if they're willing to pass laws to say what a person can do with their own body where's the limit where will they say that they can't roll back or decide to litigate again marriage equality or okay. adoption or any of these kind of things and, that we've been working towards and trying to achieve yeah it's been one of the things that i've no- i mean people have been noticing and i've seen a lot of it to myself is just like when so when trump hit office you know, a few years ago, those are the big things. Like, cause it was very much coming out that he was um, anti-gay marriage or he had backers that were anti-gay marriage and that there was all these things going on and things were happening slowly, but surely that seemed to be hadn't yet taken effect, but like were going to potentially take effect that would in some ways remove all the things that we've been fighting for, for the past 50 years. Mm-hmm. Um, You know, and we saw that happening and did I see a lot of like pushback and what have, you know, whatnot. I saw some, but I don't think so. I saw it to the level of say what was going on when we were trying to get marriage, you know, accepted, you know, so it's kind of that whole, like you said, double-edged sword. Are we, are we, are we resting on it? Are we, are we just like, I, I agree with Jeff. I think some of us have become complacent. You know, we've lived in this, we've got marriage equality, which is great. Um, but there's all these other things that still have yet to be done. And mm-hmm. it was all like, now we got that done. We're good now, right? Like that's, and I don't feel that's ever been the case. There are so many things out there. There are so many issues out there. And one of the, you know, the most recent one has become an issue for everyone with, um, abortion rights being taken away because that does in some way affect our community you know mm-hmm. women are a part of our community as well and 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 it just it bothers the fuck out of me that that's something that has happened especially in a state and mm-hmm. um what what can we do like what are we do- doing well and it this is really I what it came right down now to. don't know what we can do well, but this is that's the reason why I kind of brought it up is because what bothered me is I realized like who is the Larry Kramer of 2019? Mm-hmm. So for the children who don't know who Larry Kramer is, first of all, find a web search engine and look him up. Second of all, <laughs> um, because like I, I don't have the time to like kind of educate on this, but Larry Kramer was an activist from the AIDS epidemic era who basically like worked so hard on ACT UP as an entity and organization to say like people are dying, period. We cannot allow this to happen. Like we have to demand that our decency as humans be recognized and that we be treated and like to find a cure for this, you know, disease that is like basically wiping out our community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it got me thinking about like, have we really moved away from our roots of advocacy and activism and fighting? And I don't mean physically fighting, but I mean like fighting for what's right. Like, 
in terms of like humanity, are we just kind of being complacent or you know taking too much of a neutral stance and not being willing to say, "Hey, that's not right, that's not fair." Like if you start moving this line, then all the lines start to move in terms mm -hmm. of you know general um you know kind of like what we want what we need what we feel is appropriate it just mm -hmm. it, it kind of makes me wonder if going into pride season this year we will see a lot of that you know kind of energy towards political action being engaged demanding you know standing side by side with other individuals that need it because that was one of the key things i thought that came up initially right when marriage equality happened was a lot of individuals were kind of like okay cool and other people were like okay now what and then now what mm -hmm. is the part of the community that was like like what's the next front what's, what's the next thing mm -hmm. that we should be working towards so yes it's it's historic that the house of representatives in the u.s this past week passed the inclusive lgbt you know um law that for just the house to be fair it's not law mm -hmm. of the land but that it was the first time in congress that we actually had a major body put forth an equality a aspect to you know human rights so to speak in terms of our citizenship and while yeah it's great that the house did that i'm not that excited about it because i don't expect to get to the senate or be considered let alone pass mm -hmm. and not necessarily be vetoed by the current president like it's just one of these situations where i'm like mm, it feels a little pandering mm -hmm. just a little like but I get it in a political landscape where you're trying to like make a distinction between major parties and what you know is the focus and what they're doing. It, it all adds up in a bigger picture kind of thing. But I'm just like, mm. like, yeah. I would have been more impressed if the House had actually passed a resolution with a majority vote about like human decency rights over our own bodies. Like this mm -hmm. whole thing about like, you know, women's reproductive rights. I don't have much to say about it because I'm not a woman other than I think a woman should have a choice, but perhaps mm -hmm. maybe we should look at it in a more broad perspective and say that every individual person has their own right to decide what they want to do with their own body. Mm -hmm. Full stop. Yeah. And just, be done with it. So it's like, if I decide that I want to like do things to my certain body, I should be able to do that. Like if I want to put things in it, if I want to take things out of it, like that's should be my own prerogative. And in some ways we have those rights, but I think we just haven't definitively declared flat out and stop. Like this is a right that you individually have that mm -hmm. cannot be infringed yeah. on in any other way. If that makes sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does. It's been, like you said, it's been one of these for me personally that this issue has been one of the biggest ones in my mind on my mind, especially since it's becoming so recent. Um, and I agree with you. Like I shouldn't have a say. Meaning, like I, I don't I'm not a biological woman or you know, assigned woman. I don't have those parts. I do not carry a child, therefore I should not have a say in what happens. If a, if a woman decides to do that, do whatever with that, with her body. Right. So that's been my kind of my personal stance on it for a long time. And now we're dealing with, so we're just going to like, don't worry about that. You know, it doesn't matter. And I, the things I've loved, like not love, but I've seen that have made me the most angry are the things that it, it does have, it doesn't have anything to do with pro life. Our, our birth, you know, children, our babies, it has to do with taking, to me, taking women's rights away. Mm -hmm. Like in the grand scheme of things. To me, it means like, because who's going to take care of the child after it's born? You're going to expect the mother to, right? Well, what if she can't? Right. What if she dies? So what happens to the child? You know, what if it's the child is a child? <laughs> you know, what if the woman is a child? Like it's all those things that kind of go through our mind and it's like no one cares about that well and i i can understand where there's a like aspect into this about like specifically in terms of the reproductive rights about like religion and spirituality about like when life begins that whole concept and how there needs to be a right for that life but like until 
we can separate like science and mm-hmm. the concept of religion slash spirituality, I think that this is going to be an ongoing issue for, for a long time. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and that's really unfortunate because I, I, you know, I, I understand that what I have to say doesn't really mean a hill of beans in this case. Mm-hmm. Um, only because like all three of us is like since gender males, like we don't really have a contribution to that. You know, it's not something mm-hmm. that we specifically face, but it doesn't mean that we shouldn't also, I guess, be engaged. And that's more, I guess where this is really coming from is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Like, you know, there's pins and there's flags and there's hats and blah, 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 blah. you know, there's all this schlock. There's all these, you know, things that are out there, these things that we can buy and be supportive of and stuff. And don't get me wrong. Like, I'm wearing this specific shirt for Ride It Out for Pride Night at Kings Island because I wanted to be supportive of what Rusty was doing. This was, I think, the last year with the LGBT Center, you know, of Cincinnati and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But, like, at the same time, like, it means something specific to me, and I made that decision going into it. As opposed to being like, oh, it's look, isn't that, is that cute? Like, it has a rainbow on it. I should just get it because it has a rainbow on it. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. think they're, I'm just more concerned more than ever, I think, about us like being engaged in what it is that we're doing, why we're doing it, and thinking about like the consequence of that action, how we participate uh, in our own, you know, kind of legal system and justice. Because, like, you know, for example, this coming Tuesday, it's going to be, you know, voting here locally for local officials. And at first I was kind of like, mm, not really interested. And then I was like, I know better. Like, the people that become the superintendents, that become the judges, that become, you know, the comptrollers, like, all of these positions, while they're lower level, they have a big impact. They end up creating the local council that creates the ordinances as to whether or not there is, you know, fair treatment and housing. And, you know, even if it's just like about parking tickets or whatever, like Mm -hmm. it all matters in some level. And I think that we've grown more and more disconnected into these type of things. And then we see all this like, well, I didn't realize that by not voting or by not doing this or whatever it is that like this was going to be the outcome. Like, yeah, well, that's yeah. that's kind of how it is. I mean, I realize I'm getting on a soapbox, obviously, with this particular <laughs> topic, but it was kind of, you know, it's really like, where's where's our, I guess, our engagement? Yeah. And how important is that? Do we care about it? Yeah. I think what, I, more than ever, especially now, people need to be more engaged and more involved in their political debates and climates. It's uncomfortable. I know. I was one of those people for a long time that was very like, for lack of a better phrase, anti-politics. I didn't really want to get involved. I didn't really want to know anything because it, it's such a hurt your brain. Hot button, huh? Hurt your brain. Yeah, it hurts my brain. It also is a very much a hot button topic that is so divisive, and it just becomes such a conflict, and and everything can just get shit hits the fan, and everything like goes crazy, and people start yelling and. Uh, uh-uh. I am not all about that drama. I I have enough drama in my own damn life to then add on to it. So, um, so that was kind of what I where I was for a long time, and then I realized I can't do that anymore, and mm-hmm. I don't think we should do that anymore, because everything in some way has a ripple effect. Right. Everything political, everything that happens has a ripple effect that will eventually in some way catch up to you. You may not think it does, but it will. Because it's going to happen in some way, shape, or form. Even though, like right now, the thing we've been talking about with like anti-abortion stuff may not necessarily affect you because, hey, you're, you're a cisgender male. It does, and it will. And it, you may not see it now, but it could. You know, that's essentially, in some ways, to dumb it down, it's someone or some bodies taking control of the body of another person. Well, if you like, yes, it won't directly affect us, but um, we all came from women. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's one key factor. Mm -hmm. The others is a lot of us have sisters, aunts, Mm -hmm. grandmothers, uh, female coworkers, like Mm -hmm. best friends, other family members. I mean, you know, uh, neighbors. I mean, like, so it's not that, you aren't directly affected. I mean, you technically are not directly affected, but you can be affected by it, you know, in terms of how a person, you know, views themselves and, mm-hmm. and does things. So, and, you know, to kind of add on to it, like, 
as we've, you know, people have mentioned, just because we got married equality, the fight wasn't over. We still had trans rights that needed to be taken care of. We still had unemployment, or not em- unemployment, we still had employment rights that are, can be easily taken away. We have states in this country that you can um, get, you know, you cannot get, a, you could get banned from housing because you're LGBT. Like, mm-hmm. we still know that. You know, there are things that are still going on in this country that we should still be working and fighting for. And I agree, like, the fight is never, it, I don't I want to say it's never over, but it's not over yet. This was a big milestone, and it's great that it happened, but think about how long it took to happen. Right. You know, if you count 1969, you know, Stonewall as the start or catalyst of the gay rights movement, mm-hmm. marriage equality technically took almost 50 years. I, I know it didn't, um, but that's... Right kind of the thing like so it's very you know to use that timeline it's going to take a while for other things to get happen but it can't happen if people stop fighting right if they're if they're not engaged to understand Mm -hmm. like where we stand what the impacts are Mm -hmm. um you know and i just that's the one thing about like pride that kind of bothers me a little bit is like, well, I appreciate the celebration and yes, you know, it's, it can be a party at the same mm-hmm. time. You know, I think, especially I think you gain that wisdom as you get older through life mm-hmm. experience to understand why that kind of civic engagement to hold people accountable to what they say, what they do, um, that that's us to really, it, it forms and informs other people in terms yeah, of yeah. what, you know, we are dealing with and what we're facing in that case. <clears throat> and that's where I think some people kind of probably get tired, you know, and they're kind of like, yeah, 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 you know, it's great. It's pride. I mean, I, I know yeah. as we get older, a lot of individuals less and less participate in pride. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, yeah, I'm all prided out. Like, you know, I, I've been there, done that. Wave the flag, march to the, the parade. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Bought the t-shirt. <laughs> right. I, I wear my rainbow t-shirt. I've got my rainbow flag. I've got my rainbow stickers. I'm right. good. Like. <laughs> right. Went and partied hard. Did, did, Went to did the, the march. Rain- walked right. around. Got sick. Waved at the people. Gave, gave a rainbow a technicolor thing. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, like, yeah. So I understand that you know you i don't want to say you grow old of it but you your life changes you know and Mm -hmm. especially if you have the privilege of being older and i don't want to say settling down but you know getting married and having a home and pets kids you know all this stuff that we were sold for decades as like the american dream could could it also be that the with the people who have been you know, fighting for a long time have been getting older. It's they're they're starting to just get tired. Definitely of doing it, and then the younger generation gets grown up in this relative, relatively neutral. Not great, but you know, just right. kind of like in between where things are still are comfortable. Things are much easier for kids to come out uh, at a younger age. Uh, mm-hmm. People can be more informed, can find porn on the internet easily. <laughs> you know, it's it's all these all these things are just already there. Mm-hmm. That it becomes uh, more of a place where it's it feels like they don't feel the need to get out there and advocate uh, yeah. possibly being being because it's like maybe that is the question is is what is the issues that we should be fighting for right now mm-hmm. because we're it's, in such a okay place mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that we haven't quite gotten the uh, uh, we, we don't have really have the motivation that a good portion of the the community really doesn't have the motivation to really do the advocacy, and yeah. there is advocacy it's, out there. It's just not as 
big of a thing nowadays. <laughs> it's right. It's be it's becoming very interesting. Like there's a there's been for lack of terms a dichotomy. Or I see I've seen two like especially in younger generations I've seen two not basic types but two type ish kind of things. I see the ones that don't know the history for one reason or another. Maybe they don't have elders. Maybe they don't, you know, they grew up in our age where everything kind of gets, you know, they can find everything they need, but they don't necessarily know what to find or look for. So they just go on through life without knowing, not that it's a problem per se, but just that they go on through life without asking the right questions. And then you have the ones, I have seen a lot of youth, especially that have become very strong activists for one reason or another, and especially in the LGBT com- community, because mm-hmm. uh, I don't really know how they know about it or learn about it, but they figure it out or they find something out or they read something or they hear something or they find an article or whatever, and it changes their perspective. So is the information probably out there? For sure, it's out there. It's just a matter of how are we engaging those people, those younger people, especially to learn more about it or to get that information, you know, this is a good milestone to kind of start talking, having a conversation because it is the 50th anniversary of Stonewall that we can start having these conversations with these younger, um, young adults or younger, you know, aged um, people to kind of get them involved, to get them motivated. Cause again, I, I know everyone says this all the time, but they wouldn't have the freedoms that they have now without those coming before them doing the work mm-hmm. that they have done. You know, um, hell, the fact that I'm on prep, you know, is is a is a <laughs> you know, there's a reason why that happened. There's a reason for that being done. And while it is a medical thing, technically, there was probably people fighting for it for years to get you know education and someone to start looking at the epidemic that was happening to especially the, the gay population at the mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. so it's just it's it's going to be it's a matter of trying to figure out what can get people engaged as you said gary what can keep people engaged and keep them motivated to keep moving and keep going and keep fighting because i don't as you mentioned the answer uh, for me, the answer to your question of are we selling out? Um, I want to say no. I think what has happened is we have become an we have become a society of complacency. I know we've mentioned that word several times, but that's kind of what we've done. Where we're okay now, so let's not stir the pot because we don't want our we don't want people to start looking back on what we've done. And trying to change it, but we also don't want to necessarily lead the charge to get things that we know need to be fixed done. Hence the whole neutral zone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, so I was looking over the live chat, some of what they've been saying. Like, Owen says, it seems we should be getting involved in issues that don't directly involve. Uh, us as well individual struggles individual respect for people who are respecting other ideas which i that was kind of the way i was brought up and that's part of the key issue is i think that we generationally like we definitively form our own values for the first portion of our life based on what happens immediately around us so if you're raised in a home where you think it's appropriate to put people down to treat them negatively to see yourself Mm -hmm. as superior that's just natural to you because you know no different that's what your environment was And then you may realize as you age and get older out into the world that, oh, actually, maybe that isn't cool. Or you just see more of it and like you perhaps just, you know, have a mindset that you're not going to move out of that. I came from a home environment, you know, that was pretty neutral about a a lot of things. We weren't highly political. We didn't talk about politics. Um, I, you know, my parents did vote, but they really didn't bring a lot of it into the home. And we didn't discuss that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. only because I think they just kind of knew for themselves and didn't see it as a as an issue like that we needed to address but as i became a young adult and struggled with my own identity i moved into that like i i was impacted by people's treatment of me because of my uniqueness quote unquote that made me into the person that i am that was like well my rights are being like 
infringed upon or I don't have these rights or whatever the mm-hmm. case may be. So now that you know we've moved into this place where we have more acceptance, I, I kind of agree with where Owen's that, you know, like like we should be making an effort to get to know the other individuals that we can't necessarily relate to only because we are not them but that doesn't change that we should not respect them you know for whatever their their situation is in that case sorry i'm catching up on the live chat Mm -hmm. i am too (laughs) i mean you know and and so i mean when i went to high school we didn't have a gay student like Mm-hmm. organization of any sort mm-hmm. like there was right. there was one known out gay individual who was in the year ahead of me and i was in awe of him and also scared of him because i thought he was a complete badass and then all these years later i got a chance to talk to johnny it was a little while ago probably about five years ago and i told him that finally because i saw him because he still lives here locally he and his mm-hmm. husband and stuff and i had happened to mention to him i was like hey i just want you to know like when you were when we were in high school I was like in awe of you, but I was also scared by you. And he's like scared. And I was like, yeah, I'm like, you constantly walk around in this, like this black leather biker jacket as this like hardcore, like you were in everybody's face, not in everybody's face. Like, Hey, I suck dick. But like you were in everybody's face. If they got it in your face or they called you a faggot behind your back or said anything, like you would just be ready right there and then to whoop their ass. And he's like, yeah, because they shouldn't do that. He's like, and it was also self-defense. He's like, I constantly felt, you know, that I needed to protect myself in a way. Mm. And, but I get it. Like, but I was trying to tell him, like, like it was a double-edged sword. Like, while there was a part of me that's like, oh, look, there's someone who's out. But I can't be that. Like, I, mm-hmm. I don't have that type of confidence. I don't feel that, you know, whatever. Um, but that was the only thing. Like, we didn't have an organization and stuff. And then when I went to college, yeah. we, you know, had an organization that started up that I was active in all the years and helped uh, lead with, you know, and do things with and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it continued on. Like, after college, I got involved in, in local entities and I still am to this day. So mm-hmm. a lot of that was, you know, kind of my own, I guess, evolution or experience because of how, how that stuff is. So yeah, in no. terms of, like, you know, having outlets or groups or organizations that kind of stuff i think that that's important i mean that was a, a recent discussion locally is about how like a lot of the organizations aren't really working together mm-hmm. they're all very siloed yep. so like well this group you know this is the women's group and this is the gay men's group and this is what the bears do and this blah, blah 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 you know and this is what the youth group does and they're not really necessarily coming together so they're trying to do something to bring them together but as someone else pointed out to me, like, yeah, that's great. So, like, once a year we sit down and have, like, a chat. Woo! Right. But it's like, well, we're not <laughs> doing anything to bring them to do stuff. Bring it all to set you know? yeah. So, one thought would be, would one thing to kind of be as, like, a goal for is, you know how in, like, social studies, histories, classes... Uh, they talk about uh, the civil rights movements of like the 60s. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Martin Luther King, etc. Mm-hmm. Would the next, probably a good goal to go for next would be to include gay history in there? Like not like a full like class, like, a, like right. a, a, an actual like gay studies 101 or something like that. But as part of the general curriculum, there may be an episode which talks about the history of the gay culture, Stonewall, etc. To kind of inform people just in general about it, it would kind of be like in parallel with the the black civil rights movements of the 60s moving on. Mm-hmm. You know, they started getting their freedoms. uh um and and more and then there was this matter and this is what happened and just these events that that partook and things that came out of it Um, i think maybe not going into like big detail about uh, specific topics but because stonewall in and of itself is part of american history just in general this was a big Mm -hmm. riot that happened I don't rem- I, I could never remember when it when it happened. It was like it was in the seventies or was that right? It was nineteen sixty nine. 
69. It was June of 69. But the yeah. the thing is is that off by a year. So what you what you're saying Jeff I don't disagree with, but I have a I have issue with history education in the US period just because I like I when I came up through education I presumed what I was being taught was correct and now looking back on it it infuriates me because I'm like no, I was being sold a certain type of history. It was not authentically true, and it's what I think we have an issue with in our country is that we don't want to own, like, the reality of how things happen. Now, granted, I haven't been in a public education classroom for history in a long time. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what is happening in terms of the curriculum or what's in the books these days, but the fact that, you know, it feels to me culturally in terms of social media, there's a lot more like, hey – did you know this is how we treated like native, you know, Americans? Hey, did you know this is how we treated this community? Hey, did you know? Like all this stuff feels like it comes out of the woodwork later and it bothers me because I'm like it would have been helpful to know going through history that we were imperfect all the time. Mm-hmm. Like full stop. Like no leader is perfect. No movement is perfect. No whatever it is. And that all of these things that are various aspects of humanity have struggled and they rightly struggled because of who was developing and who was working on things. And so, yes, in answer to your question, I think that there should be some aspect of that. But I think that about a lot of things like John Leguizamo did a one man show on Broadway that's uh, available on Netflix. I think I talked about it before Mm -hmm. um, as a recommendation. I really think people should watch it. I learned a ton about Latin history and I'm like, where was this? Like, (laughs) this wasn't around like when I was younger and he didn't necessarily talk about stuff since I was born. I mean, he kind of did. But like. It was just one of those things where I was kind of like, this is like a TED talk. This shit should be shown in class. Like, Mm -hmm. and trust me, students will engage because I don't care how much culture has changed. They will sit and watch something on television or on a screen today, just like we did back (laughs) then. Like, if we didn't have to read it in a book, if we got to have a movie day, let me tell you, people like, 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 you know, (laughs) so I think that they would, you know, be involved in that kind of stuff. It's essentially what what will happen is it will have to be you have to find a way to relate it to now, you know, in some way, because history, like you said, is unfortunately relative, you know, for some it's, you know, as we've, I think, it, what is the, what is the quote? History is written by the winners. History is not- written by the winners. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's the one thing that is often, you know, it's always been skewed in one way, shape or form. And um, gosh, I learned that in one of my history classes, you know, while we were discussing at a great high school history teacher, by the way, um, was he hot? That... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did. I did have some hot history teachers, or, or at least social yeah. studies teachers. Yeah. Hey, I had one. I had one in fifth grade that had a beard. My my high school teacher in my high school history teacher was yes, very hot, and yes, he did have a beard, and he was kind of burly, and he did have a hairy chest. Not that I noticed that, but beside the point. <laughs> <laughs> and now we know why David was engaged in history class. He paid attention. But it was, yeah, I paid attention because he was, yeah. Anyway, no, I paid attention because it was a good class also. Um, but, like, he was the one, like, he, you know, he gave us all these interesting but He told us to kind of open our eyes a little bit more and not just read what's in the book, as for lack of a better term. Like, he gave us a very unique... Um, and this was just like U.S. history kind of thing, um, perspective of stuff. And I will always love that because of what that essentially kept me um, to this day about, like making sure that you see the different. Per- you try to look at the different perspective. You know, again, there's going to be two sides or three sides to every you know story. There's going to be one person's perspective. There's going to be another per- person's perspective. And there's going to be the actual perception. So, I mean, what you say, David, reminds me of this is sort of off topic, but like it's really about engagement. It's about like how you come across in terms of instruction. One of the things that we did in my high school was uh, I had an English class, an English literature class, actually. Surprisingly, so our high school teacher was also a college professor. Like mm. on, the, on like on the side, so like he his major forty hour week job was high school, and then he also taught like evening uh, English studies for college lit. But 
what he did in one of the years, and he did it for many, many years, was at the beginning of the year, you would get a permission slip and you have to take it home to your parents and they would have to agree that you could stay in that class because during the year, we were going to study the Old Testament of the Bible as Mm -hmm. story. And he had to face the reality that some people would take issue with this in terms of spirituality because to them, it's the holy book. And you don't mm-hmm. dissect it and break it down and debate it and blah, 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 blah. Like you accept mm-hmm. it because that's what it is. But like that's what we did. And I found it fascinating to take this you know, concept. And he, when he started it, he said flat out, it is a collection of stories that were passed down by word and eventually written. We are going to look at it from that perspective. We are not going to get into the semantics of like believing in God or any of these other kind of things. Like it's not going to be religious. It is purely from a literature standpoint. But I found it fascinating that he like engaged in, in that way. And it for me, it's one of the things that stands about my education in my like past that I still think about to this day every now and then is how you take on something and you go at it, I guess, in a different way or get people to open their minds and think about it differently. Mm. And it kind of sounds like that's what you're saying, like in terms of your history class that your teacher was like, like, here's this, this is not everything. Do you know what I mean? Like there's more to consider um, outside of this. And Mm -hmm. if that's happening out there in our education system, that's awesome. I applaud it. I just don't know though. I mean, what makes, right. What makes, the news is about teachers being underpaid, not having enough resources, fundraising for school supplies for, Mm -hmm. you know, um, I mean, you know, it's all this stuff that we're not, I think, doing good by our own country's future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By, you know, underserving what the potential is and what people can learn. And that's the same. Like, I think, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to jump on a soapbox here. Cause I just, it's the one thing, cause for a long time I wanted to be a teacher. So, and I stopped and there's a reason why <laughs> teachers are so undervalued in this country that it is ridiculous. I'm waiting for I, hallelujah I, to come from the chat. <laughs> <laughs> cause it is one of the things like in my, like my perspective that these are the people that essentially guide for six, seven, eight hours a day the future of our country there should be something more done in regards to that we do not value education the way we should we never have and i wish i could understand why that was the case like like what about this makes it so much more difficult when we could pay an athlete like twice or three times what we pay a teacher and you know, that athlete tech may not be able to do what they do because they haven't gotten the right education. No, it's, it's my whole, like, I'm, I could, right. like, again, I could, again, I'm going to stop now because, <laughs> but it's one of my biggest issues with this country is that education is so undervalued and there's no real reason for that. I have two things to say to you as possible answers as to why education is undervalued. One, American education was primarily delivered by women initially, and we devalue women. Boom. Okay. Second, (laughs) the return on investment takes far too long. An athlete can be paid millions because they can either perform on the field of play or they can't. Mm. Like, so either you are immediately worthy of that million dollar check, multi million dollar check, or you are not. It is very simple. Like, can you put out? Can you not put out? That's how that works. Take that how you want. (laughs) So. (laughs) <laughs> but, that, but I think that's what it comes down to. Anything that takes How's your stamina, long, like anything that takes a length of time to see how it's going to play out, people lose interest. They disengage. They're not interested if it doesn't consistently annoy them, bother them, like involve them in some fashion. They lose interest. They don't pay any attention to it. And I think that's what's happened, unfortunately, in our political system, like in many of our systems in our specific country, that like we. We move on to the next thing. Ooh, shiny. Like, there's a thing that I got to focus on this other thing. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, you don't pay attention to what's been going on. So, yes, like, the governorships 
the state houses like across the country have been doing certain things in terms of law in t- in terms of who they're putting into courts and who's deciding things and that's what's been coming up a lot recently in the news okay. i've been seeing i'll own that mine is skewed it's biased just like all of ours is technically individually because that's what technology has been doing to us now is like, you know, we only get to see ba- things based on how it is. If you do an online web search, unless you're doing it in a private incognito type mode, you're always going to have skewed results. Damon and I can put in the same thing and look for the same stuff and we will not see the okay. same thing because we have a whole past history of what we've looked at that affects today. And the same is true, I think, in everything else. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, just to answer Philip's question, you were saying what subject grade. So when I was, um, I was going to do elementary education. Um, I didn't have a specific, I never, because of my education at the time, I never set a specific like class or grade. It was at the po- point in time, elementary um, education, because my last thing when I was, you know, a young in college was to <laughs> like, I wanted to guide uh, people who are like me, you know, be that mentor, be that teacher that kind of helped them on the path to a, in a to into a better direction for their life. That was my, you know, ideal as a, you know, young, not knowing better um, what high school or I was just graduating high school, you know, I've learned better. But um, what happened with me with to put it simply, what happened is um I wasn't really ready for the curriculum that was involved and all the work that was going to need to take place on top of it. And then to maybe not have that matter. I I could, I could, I won't go into it too much, but you know, Philip, if you want to talk to me afterwards, you can message me on telegram because it was, it's a very, it was a very weird situation for me at that time when I was in college and it just suddenly did not make sense. Right. I mean, I I went to college for it, to pursue a career in education. I was going to be a music ed teacher. The reason I chose music ed was because I really wanted to be a band director. Like, I wanted to be a marching band, like, director Mm -hmm. specifically. And I didn't understand at that time that, like, in order to direct marching band, you also most likely had to direct, like, like concert band Mm -hmm. and had to understand music theory and blah, blah, blah. I didn't understand any of that. So I go off to college to be a music educator. And then like I'm being hit with the real world. Like you have to not only practice music all the time and be a certain level of performer, but you have to adopt all these other things. Like, and I was just like, Whoa, like this is not me. Like I don't (laughs) know, like not happening. D and D is fun. I'm going to do that. And then practically (laughs) flunked out of my freshman year. So, <laughs> hashtag true story. So, Took me to my sophomore year to to be kicked out. So, so I turned around in my sophomore year and you know, you know kind of refocused my life a little bit and in my college education, and then eventually ended up changing my career focus completely because I was like, no, like this is just this does not bring me joy. <laughs> yeah, to I, borrow a phrase, I originally, I also originally wanted to be a English teacher, mainly mm-hmm. because I wanted to. My real true goal was I wanted to direct high school theater, mainly because mm-hmm. I had so much fun doing high school theater. Mm-hmm. And that changed over to a theater major. And then my excuse for for not completing college was I th- that I felt that all the teachers told me that I was smart and I never did the work to prove it. <laughs> I completely like understand that jeff that was one of my mother's main complaints about when i was in specifically more into junior and then senior high she would be mad at me because i wouldn't put any effort in like i would do homework because it needed to be done but i wouldn't really study for tests and i would get passing grades all the time and it infuriated her because she was like and she she once lectured me she was like your father and i had to bust our asses to barely get passing c's you do nothing and you (laughs) automatically get a c plus or a b easily even an a and she's like, you have no idea how good you have it. Like, mm. she just kind of blew up once because she was just mad as all get out. Like, yeah, and for, how I just kind of didn't care. For me. It came naturally. For me, I would have gotten easily pass, passing, if not A, grades if I had just done the work. Like, papers, mm. I rarely ever did. Mm. I procrastinated on things for my speech communications classes. And mm-hmm. everything. Um, yeah, I mean... Part of it was 
I was just not interested in doing the work. Right. And I, I didn't feel necessarily motivated enough to do the work to essentially prove how intelligent I was and mm. to show that I can do each of these things, which is the reason why I never completed college is they kicked me out and I just never went back because a lot mm. of it was just, it wasn't that I couldn't do the work that uh, the that I wouldn't be able to make those passing grades. It's just that I never did the work to get those passing grades so that I could then eventually graduate with a degree. So, right. it, so if anything, kids, I strongly recommend you just do the work, just get it over and done with. And if you, <laughs> as long as you do the work, you're probably going to be just fine. It's just making the effort to do the work because I can almost guarantee the reason why I haven't gotten a, a decent, uh, consistent job was because I don't have a fucking degree. <laughs> I don't care what degree you get, just get a degree and you'll mm. probably have a better chance at things. Well, and that's one of the things I think that's broken about our system is like oh the, not only is the education system broken, but also mm. just like in terms of like the workplace, like you have to have certain things before they'll even consider you. It's like, but what's wrong with just working? You know what I mean? Like, like just yes, totally that. Why can't you just go to, you know, apply yourself in a work field and do a thing? You can technically, but it's very difficult. I think we make it, you know, challenging for an individual to just put in the effort to do the thing that they're attempting to accomplish you know, it takes a special kind of individual, I think, that has that strength of stamina of their of like the core essence of who they are to just say, fuck it all and still apply themselves, you know, and get the work done without the degree, quote unquote, or whatever it is that is, you know, some type of a measurement that you are uh, appropriate individual for this. Mm -hmm. And that's difficult because I think it takes a long time for us to find our way to determine what it is that we want to do and what mm -hmm. we want to achieve with that. And instead, you know, the, the downside is the longer, the more you move around trying to figure your stuff out, I think potentially employers and other people are like, Oh, this person is just kind of wandering all over the place. Like they're like, they're, they're not reliable. They don't know what they're doing, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, did we ever give him a, a chance? like to figure out their their shit yeah like as I, opposed to a system that tells them this is the path forward and this is the only way to get things accomplished or if you see somebody has been on a contract they completed the contract um it, and they're they're still not there but they keep moving from job to job because they always get contract jobs it, it's that shouldn't be an emphasis on how well they are of a worker if they completed the contract like they didn't leave before the contract actually ended or that the employer ended the contract or, or anything, right. then that should be saying uh, something showing that, that, Hey, these, these people are dedicated that when they get a job, they take the job and they complete it. Whatever that job is. The only thing is, Oh, this person doesn't have a degree. That's going to be a strike. It's not necessarily takes them completely out of the running. Right. I won't say that, but having a degree feels like it's a value add to people. And one right. problem with the education system in our country is that to get those degrees, you have to pay a shit ton load of money. And, right. and you've got student loans. I mean, it's, it's a shit storm. Well, and, and it's that's, because that's, because people aren't using the all the education to educate the people. That's an a value added benefit to it, but they're also there to make money. Right. That the reason why it costs so much is because they're trying to make money, both uh, uh, for the schools uh, to to pay their employees, but also because they want to make a, a profit out of the whole thing too. Right. And there are countries around this world with a better education, a, a if not a as good, if not better education system where you're either not paying as much or not needing to pay at all for that higher education. Right. 
and we haven't we haven't actually gone into looking into trying to convert our system to that because we're basically stuck in our old ways our capitalist ways again this is a capitalist com country and i'm not trying to be like super socialist i'm trying to to be like moderately socialist here it's <laughs> it's there's two things that i think everybody should be able to to have a right to have that not a privilege but a right to have and that is healthcare and education right and if and somebody wants people... a degree or wants to learn about something they should have ready access to it instead of having to try to get money which they can't necessarily get as much for they get stuck into student loans loans to get uh, working shit at, at jobs when they have potential they just need to get that education in order to get to mm -hmm. the jobs that they probably really could qualify for as right. it, but they may just not be able to afford there may be some great scientists out there that just can great doctors that could go to do all these but they can't afford to and yeah. I know there's scholarships and there's other ways, but in the end, it just comes down to money. And we really need to lower that whole thing about people getting the education. Obviously, the people giving the education should still get paid paid a, a good sum because mm -hmm. they're, they're basically providing the investment into our future. Right. I mean, I, I don't disagree with anything that you were saying, Jeff. I think the one of the key factors is that we we have a value driven system. I think that's like it's just a mess. And part of that is because we're saying that, like, well, you have to have this in order to get this other thing instead of just naturally saying another alternative would be to say everybody has the right to a proper education that gives them these base abilities because that's technically what the education system should be doing mm -hmm. but it fa it failed us like i went to school and graduated not knowing how to balance a checkbook mm. like understanding personal finances and how that works or how credit works wow or so funny. taxes like i didn't get any of that in my education but you know I what got... i did get i got fucking algebra classes like <laughs> that maybe in some ways like affect my current day but it's like you know i mean i feel blessed that i went to school when i still had to do fucking like trade like a home ec you know like home economics mm -hmm. and uh -huh. still had to do uh what the fuck did we call it shop class mm -hmm. yeah like mm -hmm. so i had to do woodworking metalwork. Yeah, like I remember like spot some, welding. Yeah, some trade type stuff. Like really so I had to like it was a little tray, bit which more... I kind of wish I had that tray nowadays because it would be a perfect metal dice tray, but you know, I don't know what happened to it. Yeah. It's oh, the... Philip, I'm not personally attacking you, sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, but the thing is is that like you know, like, I think there could have been better ways to round all of that stuff out. And I, like, a, a bunch of that stuff's gone by the wayside. Like, we don't really have it anymore. One of my best friends, her grandson and his fiance, literally just graduated from a trade school in welding. And they're looking to get in with a union to help them, like, earn that higher wage, which will pay back their, their loans faster for the education mm -hmm. that they just completed in a trade school for a couple of years. But I'm really happy for them. And we've all been supportive of the fact that, like, they're going to be working a job that I don't know how to do, but I rely on. Mm -hmm. like, that's how simple that is. Like, the plumbing in my house required somebody who knows how to do some of that shit, like, as a that trade. The electric, like the light that's lighting up my face right now, that's making the internet work, like all of these things, the car that I drive, like somebody somewhere had to know how to do something that I don't uh -huh. to make that happen. Uh -huh. There's nothing wrong with that, and it shouldn't be devalued. It should be presented as like an option on the table. And I think uh -huh. what gets convoluted is that people forget not only is that an option, but also that like the arts, in my opinion, uh -huh. bring something. Like it uh -huh. is entertainment, but it also gives you like – uh, a moment to escape reality, to use imagination, to consider other concepts, to do other things. And I think we've uh, positioned our, our American society vastly in the direction of like, woo, shiny, like so many things distract and we don't care how they were created to distract. 
or how mm-hmm. it works, where it comes from, any of that kind of stuff. And it's disconcerting. And I think as as you age, the more you start having like a bigger picture perspective because you can you have that you have life experience and you can kind mm-hmm. of look back to life, but you can also start recognizing that like especially if you're not living from like minute to minute to moment to moment and you're kind of like, oh, I'd like to take a vacation. Well, in order to take a vacation, I probably need to save a little money. You know, I mean like, mm-hmm. like some of that yeah. stuff as opposed to being like, you know, I'm young and I don't give a shit about nothing. You know. <laughs> but you know. Yeah, it's funny. So when I was in, like, actually, it started when I was in elementary school, um, we had what was known as the advanced program. And, like, all the things that I've learned were because of because of that. When I started in third grade, it was meant to um, you know, and help us change, like, be future whatever. Like, future leaders, future business people, future whatever, you know, all these kind of things. So I learned how to balance checkbook. I learned how to budget. I learned how to to um, do my taxes. I can technically, I mean, not so much now because I have a house and shit. But like at first, like I could do a 1040 easy. Like I can fill that shit fucker out because well, I remember I know how to do it. But it was also things- go into the fact that that uh, doing taxes is bullshit because the IRS already knows everything and it should probably just send you a bill <laughs> or money right away. We shouldn't even have to do that work. There's entire atoms ruins everything. Anyway, but having said all that, like that's you know, it's funny. I got that because of the inherent smartness. I'm using intelligence. I'll use that better word. That's a better word (laughs) that I had you know taking tests and whatever when i was in like elementary school Mm -hmm. so i started they put you on this track essentially for lack of a better phrase that was meant to be geared towards making you smarter and and better suited for the real world like we had junior achievement like that's the classes that i took that where i learned how to do the taxes and do the checkbooks and all that shit and we had um (laughs) business classes like that those all all were meant to essentially make you better people so that you would know what to do in the future. Mm. Did it help in the long run? I mean, it helped when I was in high school. Mm. I was very much, you know, smart and educated and did these, all these classes. But I was also very, 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 very naive um, about the world around me. Like, because I was also raised in a, you know, very, cult, in a culture of like spirituality, religion, because of my parents and everything. So I was very book smart. I was not very like, I had a high, for those who do d and I had a high intelligence. I did not have a high wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was very you had intelligent, a six, but I was You had not. a 16 in uh, intelligence, uh, but your wisdom was like eight. <laughs> eight. Yeah. It was just one of those things where for a long time and and I was, you know, obviously okay with that. But I had fortunately I had older brothers that were, you know, seven years older than me that were able to, for lack of a better phrase, kind of knock some sense into you to kind of give you some of that more common sense that you didn't that I didn't have for a long time. So yes, I was fortunate to have that. Um, yay. Um, but then I went to college and changed the fuck out of me in a lot of ways. I wouldn't be this without college. So and, and because <laughs> no. of all this, we are all... totally no. selling out as gays. Yeah. Yeah. We're we are conspiring to or we are we have fallen to commercialism. Mm-hmm. Well, you... I mean, I think that's, that's to just try to of... try to round back to the original topic. Right. Well, I mean, I think that's the nature of America, period, right now. Like we are mm-hmm. we're, we are very external focusing. So it's like, well, what do I have? What do I own? What does my neighbor have? What do they own? Like, am I, am I a part of the in thing? Mm-hmm. Do I have the same whatever? And yeah, that's disconcerting because when I was in education, like going through the education system, one of the things my dad said to me at one point that I'll never forget was just because your friends have like the best genes doesn't mean that they're any better than you. And it was it was trying really hard in a polite way to basically say like, this will come and go like fads will come and go like Uh culture will will change fashion will change like so while you're struggling to be a part of what's going on to be part of the inclusive thing 
you know, whether it be now, like, what does my phone do? And, you know, do I have the filter on the app or whatever, you know, the younger generation is, is dealing with now? The reality is, like, like that's on the outside. And what's more important is about the character of who you are as an individual and what you can achieve, like, and what you take personal pride in. But I think a lot of that has gone by the wayside, like, as we've evolved as an American society. Now, more than ever, it seems like we're always looking externally to what our create what our value system is and like how we see ourselves within that and that's what's disconcerting to me because i think that we as a lgbtqia community are also doing that now do you know what i mean and like that's the thing that concerns me about like are we selling out in the concept of like you know this is what it means to be gay and this is what it means to be proud and this is what it means to you know have achieved things and not okay. recognize like like one none of this came naturally two like we stand on the shoulders of generations of individuals who mm -hmm. like stood and put up with like discrimination in many different ways, including mm -hmm. when they were demanding that we have this equality, these kind of rights. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's really the, the key of the question that I was asking is like, you know, again, where is the activism, the advocacy and, and the fight? Is it is it there? Or is it not there? Well, we'll kind of bring it about in some way. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know if there's really an answer to any of that. It was just more kind of a, I guess, a rhetorical question to ask. Mm -hmm. And yes, we moved off of the topic for a while and talked about education, but I think it all ties in. Like, that's yeah. the most important thing is like, if we're not properly educating our youth, then how will they ever have any clue as to where we came mm -hmm. from and what we've done and, and the hard work that was put into it? Do they take for granted? It's like, yes, I can get married to any person that I want to because that's just the way it is now. Right. Well, okay, but that wasn't always the case. Basically, we have achieved one goal, but that's only one. One. I mean, it's going to, and it, more it will. What? Yeah. What is the and gay agenda? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe that's the next question. But you know what? It is almost my bedtime. <laughs> that's another show. <laughs> that's another show. Our in, in in our series of uh, of the uh, discussion on the state of the LGBTQIA etc. <laughs> uh, community, uh, <laughs> maybe that's, are we dot 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 new show segment? I don't know. <laughs> Welcome to Comes Out Loud series upon series upon series of different. <laughs> Well, we could make a series and a question. Maybe the next topic could be what is dot, 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 gay pride? Mm. Possibly. Are you interested in hear hearing that? Let us know. There are plenty of ways to contact us. <laughs> because you know what? Guess what, folks? That's the end. Aww. And I'm actually starting to fade. That's why I'm trying to wrap up the show. <laughs> I like Owen's latest comment in the live chat. Ooh, see you well after dark featuring Jeff Jeff's sleeping. sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get to see him in his mask. Yeah. Yes. No, it's in the other room. Anyways, plenty of ways to contact us. Let us know what else you would like us to cover all this. This You can uh, pop over to a website, comesoutloud.com, and leave a comment in the blog. Uh, you can shoot us an email at cubsoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us voicemail uh, to sexy or anything relating to any of our topics. You don't have to be sexy to, to do it, although we'd appreciate it if you'd like. So I was just wondering, what do you think of the Stonewall Revolution? <laughs> it's at 361 CML Talk. That's 361-265-8255. Put that in your phone so you can speed dial us at any time. Find us various social media outlets at Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and, of course, on YouTube. At Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can join our entourage chat and discuss all of this uh, with fellow fans of the show at telegram or tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, if you'd like to know when we're recording these, you can find our events calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Uh, you can also buy some merch, such as the V2 shirt that Damon is wearing. I got to point in the right direction. Yeah. Or or this V3 shirt. And there's different styles. As you can see, I got sleeveless. He's got short sleeves. You could get long sleeves. You could get sweatshirts. A whole bunch of different styles. Uh, over at uh, Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, you can Ooh, also find a polo. By the way, we do, I think. we do have a design for boxers which i haven't looked into 
uh, if they have that in stock recently. I was just thinking about that today. Um, you can also uh, become a patron. Uh, patrons, we love you so much because uh, you just recently helped us make sure that our hosting was around for another two years. So we appreciate that so, so much. You can do that as, for as little as a buck a month at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, you can rate us on iTunes, subscribe to us through Google Play Podcasts. You can find me anywhere in the internet. It says box step, box puppy, box cup, box something around there. Uh, I'm Theater Cup 79 on most bear related sites and also on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me online, you can look me at pretty much as Gerber73. That's G A R B E A R 73. Also, uh, send me a message. Let me know like how you want to get in touch with me because otherwise I'm going to think you use a spam bot account. <laughs> Hashtag truth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and with that, Say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Have a good one, y'all. Yes, technically there is a Discord. I just uh think should never expire. Copy. There it is. So people have been Ta-da. using the uh after dark the section of the Discord. Okay. Uh such as Tubs. Tubs frequently oh. is posting pictures in the Discord. Oh, Huh. Do I have Discord? I don't even know anymore. Actually, I probably do. Wait, no. You you should have Discord because uh, uh, you have already gone to the server. It's possible. So I did have Discord it at one time, be. but then I had to get my computer updated, so now it's all gone. I'm sorry. Wait, do I have it? Is it on my son of a bitch? I feel like I had it. Did I get rid of it? What's going Oh, there it is. Ah. I just don't think I have it. Bitch, I don't know you. Mm. Oh, That's there it is. Good lord. I have not. Like... I, do, I do remember before we did the Telegram thing, I did mention have, setting up a Discord server. Yes. I, and but I, you guys I, poo-pooed it because it's for games only. It's not necessarily for games only. I know it's not only for games. It's just another goddamn thing to pay attention to. I just hadn't, like, honestly, I have not said with been on here. (laughs) Lots of love. I'm just going to close this thing because it's on my phone. I don't need it on here. I just don't remember it. Oh, good Lord. Ooh. (laughs) Da, da, da. Ba, 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 ba. Gosh, I have not been on here in a minute. And as I'm looking down at my phone, pretty. Tubbs does post a lot. I haven't seen all this. Yeah. <laughs> you can go to Telegram. It's just a very nice thing to do. And I'm not hating it at all. Yeah, I told you. Oh, there's some penis. <laughs> Well, then, why See, am I not surprised when it comes to our show? I don't know. Oh, all right.